l- let's talk about um, some examples of behaviors that we could do that could be considered unloving, but we think well, that they're loving. One of the first examples I thought of was a couple where they were having some problems and they were sleeping in a separate room. So the one who wanted to sleep in the separate room said, please don't come into my room. She wanted the privacy. And the other one just could not let that be. She, it was two women. She had to come into the room and that made the first one feel so unsafe because she had set a boundary and it didn't have to be forever. It was a temporary boundary. They were going through problems, but the other one just kept saying, but I love you and I wanna be with you and I wanna touch you, but it's not about you. It's also about the other person and honoring their boundaries. So that's a huge one when you just cross over somebody's boundaries and pressure them in some way that they don't want to do. You can do that with uh, another example is holiday gift giving. You, You buy these big elaborate gifts and maybe the other person can't afford to spend so much money on gifts, but it puts a pressure on them to spend money that they may not have to spend or just makes them feel guilty or makes them feel less or makes them not appreciate your gift. And you say, why not? I have all this money. I'm treating you so well. Why don't you appreciate it? But it's like making them feel less because you can give so much and they can't. So it comes back to wanting to give and receive. If you feel like I can't give and I have nothing to give, at first it might feel wonderful, but after a while you feel bad about yourself. Mm, I think that's an interesting example because I think not also not everyone values gifts. Like for me, I I'm, don't get me wrong, I like receiving gifts, but it's not on the top of my love it's definitely it's the bottom love language for me like I would uh, you giving me time is much more valuable than you giving me a material possession you know um so I think uh, is there something to be said for that like the way that we like to receive um like energy I guess the love language is that book a lot of clients lately have been quoting it it really touched a, a core in a lot of people because it's some people, helpful. sometimes men, like to do something for you. Like my husband, when I need to buy a car, I need to handle something, he'll jump in and do it and handle it and make all the phone calls. He likes to do that. But he's not so good at getting a gift or for an occasion. But he'll buy a gift when he sees something that he thinks is valuable. So... I've learned over a long period of time to kind of accept that, to see where the love is and not expect it to be a certain way. So maybe someone else gives better gifts, but maybe they don't do some of the other things or don't wouldn't stand up for me the same way or whatever it is. So uh, some of us like touch, but the other person may for all kinds of reasons. They may have grown up in a family without a lot of touch or there was abuse or they were told they're a sissy if they want to touch. So there could be all kinds of reasons. Mm. So that's why it's so important to know who the other person is, know what their fears are, their dreams, their needs, their desires, know as much as you can know and then you can forgive them for a lot of things when you know where it's coming from. Mm. But but it's got to be a balance. You can only forgive so much because you have needs too. And you can't ignore your own needs and desires and dreams. If they're all squelched, you're not going to last. It's going to come out somehow. Yeah, it gets pushed down there and it comes out some some other way, doesn't it? Um. Let's talk about a few more examples of unloving behavior that we may perceive as love. Like you put pressure on somebody to prove that they love you. You keep on asking, you know, do you love me? 
I love you so much. Don't you love me? Tell me you love me. You know, and the person starts getting uncomfortable or um, you say loving words, but then you don't follow through. You say, would you like to go on a trip to this place? And then you don't make any plans and you don't, you don't go on the trip. You meant well in the moment or um, pressuring someone for sex. Like mm. if someone's been abused and you don't understand that that person had a background of abuse and you're pressuring them and grabbing at them, it can be just horrible to the person. Mm, but uh, even without traumatic. abuse, if if you just you're tired, you're working, you're not in the mood, you uh, a woman's given birth and she's taking care of one child or two children and cleaning the house and doing a lot of things and not in the mood. And if you're pressuring her to do things, um, it's you feel like, look, we're in a relationship, we're marriage or just a steady relationship. I'm entitled to this, but the other person has to feel like it. So I don't I don't has, think anyone's entitled to sex. But you, even if you're in the, a relationship. It's not like entitled, but the fact is that if you're in a relationship, where are you gonna get the sexual intimacy if not from the person that you're with? So in that way, the if you want to be in a relationship, there is this is part of it, but it has to be worked out so that both people feel appreciated. They feel the desire. And consent, of so, course. <laughs> and it's, it's not just with sex. It's also with time. Mm. Like you can, you feel like a loving relationship. We spend more time together, but this person's working hard and they're traveling and they, whatever. They've got a lot of business stuff lot of friends they have a lot going on and you like that about the person when you met them but then when you're in the relationship you don't like it so much so in other words not having enough time for you can feel really unloving yeah definitely definitely even if they're spending the time on valuable things that help you yeah. like they're spending the time on business and making money with it and they buy things for you and you get a house, it can still feel unloving. Mm, absolutely. That that um, is a really great segue into my next question. What do you think about the statement, love someone how they want to be loved rather than how, love someone how they want to be loved rather than how you want to be loved? That's huge because that's where so many problems come in. An example is a woman who's cooking for a guy and the guy really doesn't care about that. He likes to just, from his lifestyle, he likes to eat in restaurants and, and be a big shot and get a bottle of wine or whatever he does. And she's cooking for him. And, and then she gets mad at him. Look, I cooked all these meals, but he didn't care about that. Or a man spending money on a woman where she really would rather go to events. And she likes ballet or theater or something movies and and he's spending money on restaurants and she doesn't really like that so it's that's why it comes down to know the other person pay attention to what they want and like and desire and also know what you want like and desire because a lot of times we get into a relationship and it's based on attraction and it's sexually exciting, but it's not somebody that matches us in a lot of ways. Like we might love sports events and they don't like that. They're into music and we're not, or it could be things, sometimes you can learn from each other and you expand. And sometimes it just suppresses whatever you like and you start going along with what they like, or you can't even find common ground. 